From a flying tank to the world's largest plane built by internet tycoons, here are 13 weirdest aircraft designs ever. But first, thanks most random channel ever for being a part of the early crowd and for leaving us this comment on the 11 things you're not supposed to know about video. Let us know in the comment section which plane you think is the strangest and maybe we'll feature you in an upcoming video. Number 13, the Edgley EA-7 Optica. This strange aircraft is a lightweight and low speed alternative to a helicopter and is normally used for observation. The project for the Edgley EA-7 Optica began in 1974 when Edgley, a company, came up with a strange prototype and eventually private investors bought into the idea. It almost looks as if the cockpit is similar to one you'll find on helicopters and the rest of it just doesn't look quite right. With only 22 of them being constructed, these haven't really been mass produced or anything, but they seem like they would be a fairly cheap way to get off the ground. It received a mixed review with some critics calling it bug-eyed. Number 12, McDonnell XF-85 Goblin. Imagine keeping a small airplane inside another airplane and dropping it instead of a bomb. It would certainly surprise the enemies. That's what the Americans had in mind when they designed this aircraft known as a parasite fighter. This idea didn't really seem too useful, however, and the army decided to melt these fighters down and they weren't put to use. Only a few prototypes were ever created and they were deemed unsafe to pilots. Since it was so small, it would have been considered to be quite inferior to enemy aircraft and the idea was just abandoned. They were more focused on designing something that could refuel the bombers instead of a mini plane. Still a cool concept either way, and the two are on display, one in Ohio and one in Nebraska. Number 11, H4 Hercules II, or the Spruce Goose. Imagine trying to get a 200-ton aircraft into the sky that was completely made of wood. Some call it the world's most famous airplane, and this thing is a behemoth. It sits five stories tall and was designed to fit two Sherman tanks inside and possibly 500 soldiers. This was the largest transport seaplane carrier ever built out of wood, but never actually flew. It gets the name Spruce Goose, even though it was made from entirely birch trees and not spruce. The name was catchy, however, and it managed to stick. It was designed by filmmaker Howard Hughes, and they decided to use wood since the army was running low on metals like aluminum. There was only one in existence, and it's at the Evergreen Museum today in Oregon. It's been described as one of humanity's greatest attempts to conquer the skies, and if it worked, Americans would have had plenty of material to build these things. At that point in time, it had the largest wingspan of any aircraft in history, and cost about $2.5 million to build. Number 10, the Stipa Cabroni. Also known as the Flying Barrel, this experimental Italian aircraft took flight in 1932 and reached a top speed of 81 miles an hour. This photo here shows more of a modern model of the Stipa Cabroni with more Italian flair to it. The angle of the photo shows its tubular design. It weighed only about 1,800 pounds with a wingspan of 47 feet. It seemed a little bit thicker than the aircraft we know of today and was basically shaped like a barrel. The tubular design actually covered the propeller and it was called the intubulated propeller design originally. It was basically shaped like a barrel that covered its propeller. This was known as the intubated propeller design. The Italians claimed it to be the airplane of the future, shown it on several modern science magazines. The lightweight model conducted a few successful test flights, but never actually proved to have any advantages over traditional aircraft. Pilots reported that it remained quite stable while testing, but somewhat difficult to change directions with. It never really turned out to be a success, although a few Air Force incorporated parts of the design into their Air Force bombers. Number 9. The Flying Tank some military helicopters out there might get the nickname of the flying tank, but this strange prototype literally is a flying tank. This is what's known as the Antonov A-40, which is basically a six-ton tank attached to a glider plane. This illustration you see here shows the design of the glider plane from above and allows you to imagine what it'd be like if tanks could fly through the sky. The idea was to use gliders to gently transport tanks to the front lines, but this appeared to have some difficulties. This Soviet design never actually saw the battlefield, but was tested out in 1942. The extreme drag created by the tank's sheer weight was enough for them to call off the project. The Soviets looked for other ways to transport tanks from then, but it's still terrifying nonetheless. Number 8. Prototype PZL-230F Scorpion this Polish prototype jet almost hit the mass production lines in the late 1980s. This compact aircraft would have only been 32 feet long and extremely lightweight. It was also made of cheap, reliable materials, but still well armored for aircraft at that time. 
It's also designed to take off and land on shorter runways. It would have been used to destroy enemy tanks similar to the A-10 Thunderbolt aircraft. The reason why it was never put into mass production still remains somewhat of a mystery. Many thought that it was truly one of the most advanced aircrafts at that time and could have at least served as an export to foreign countries. Number 7. The Caspian Sea Monster this rare image shows the strange design of an experimental Russian plane taking off from the water. This got the nickname of the Caspian Sea Monster when word and photos got out about it. It's rumored to weigh about 540 tons and had one of the largest max ton takeoffs in history. It was designed like this to zoom across the ocean without being detected by radar. Here in this photo, we see a digitally remastered, lifelike image of what the Caspian Sea Monster would have looked like as it's barely skimming just a few feet above ocean waters. It was also possible that they were designed to carry large missiles which could have pulled close to enemy shorelines to be fired off, which this image also illustrates. This is almost like the Spruce Goose, but smaller, much more terrifying, and not made of wood. Also known as the KM or Karabi Monster by the Russians, the Americans picked up some startling satellite images of this beast and were kind of worried. Its maximum altitude was only 5 to 10 feet above water because it was quite large and it measured in 301 feet in length. One of the more notable features about the monster is that the tail stabilizer measures only slightly smaller than the wingspan of 121 feet. Number 6. Northrop XB-35 Does this thing have enough propellers already? This experimental bomber was developed by the United States Air Force shortly after World War II. This design turned out to be rather effective and was dubbed the Flying Wing shortly after production. This was what came out when the government demanded an aircraft that could carry 5 tons of bombs, make a round trip of 10,000 miles, and could reach a max speed of 450 miles an hour. This would, in theory, be able to bombard across the Atlantic in the case of an attack from the Russians. So this aircraft had some serious firepower on board and it appears to be the precursor for the stealth bomber. As you can tell, it lacks a tail stabilizer unlike most planes at this time. The strategic bomber prototype had a crew of 9 people. This consisted of a pilot, a co-pilot, a bombardier, a navigator, an engineer, a radio operator, and 3 gunners. Number 5. The V-22 Osprey It's a plane. It's a helicopter. It's, uh, kind of both. This is definitely the most expensive airplane helicopter hybrid thing the US uses. And also one of the weirdest designs too. It's actually known as a tilt rotor aircraft and it combines the small landing spaces that helicopters have with the high speed and gliding capabilities of airplanes. The small landing space needed for this aircraft makes it a popular choice for the Navy and are often deployed from aircraft carriers. It's not just the price per Osprey that costs a lot, but also the sheer number of Ospreys the government has constructed. These use Rolls-Royce T406 engines that allow them to reach top speeds of 351 miles per hour. V-22 Ospreys cost about $72 million each and the US is looking to build at least 400 of these. So you do the math and that's about $28.8 billion. Maybe the military thinks the strange design will scare off enemy soldiers? Who knows? Number 4. Blumenvoss BV-141 This strange aircraft designed by the Germans during World War II is a reminder that not all planes need to be symmetrically perfect in order to fly. The Blumenvoss BV-141 was designed as a reconnaissance aircraft to scout out the battlefield and a few dozen were actually built. Despite it flying quite well and never went into full-scale production, the little compartment on the right side of the plane would have stored a machine gunner. There are no more of these airplanes on display at museums or anywhere. The Allies came across quite a few wrecked Blumenvosses, but never were able to find one that actually worked. Number 3. The Focke-Wulf FW-189 also known as the Eagle Owl, the Germans actually preferred using this strange aircraft for reconnaissance and not the Blumenvoss. It began flying in 1938 and featured a twin engine, twin boom, three seat tactical reconnaissance, and worked in cooperation with the army. It turned out to be the most conventional option the Germans had for reconnaissance, but nonetheless, fairly bizarre looking. This is due to the heavily glazed central pod and all the unique tail designs. It was often used for training new pilots before they got into more expensive aircraft. It saw constant usage from 1942 to 1944 when it reached full-scale production. With a range of 412 miles, it could certainly give the Army a bird's-eye view of nearby borders. Number 2. The Strato Launch This massive plane has a wingspan larger than a football field at 385 feet. It features a total 6 engines that are used on Boeing 747s. It's also 5 stories tall and weighs an astonishing 500,000 pounds. To power such a massive aircraft, you're going to need a massive amount of fuel. 
It also can carry 250,000 pounds of fuel, by the way. Including cargo, it can weigh up to 1.3 million pounds. This definitely beats out the Spruce Goose for being the plane with the largest wingspan by a good 65 feet. So what the heck are they going to do with such a huge plane? It's certainly not for carrying passengers, and the world's largest plane is actually built for launching rockets to send satellites into space. The small satellites that it's launching are only about 1,000 pounds each. The plane flies up at least 35,000 feet before it releases a Pegasus XL rocket attached to a satellite. This is basically what the rich internet tycoons are doing with their spare time, and the Amazon CEO got in on the investment for this. The company Strata Launch was actually founded by a Microsoft co-founder, Paul Allen. Ultimately, this should make launching satellites into space much easier once it's ready to operate in 2019. By then, hopefully, we won't have satellites spying on our every move. And number one, the Dornier Dossier. During the Cold War, the commanders of NATO got together and attempted to come up with a proper aircraft that would be able to protect Germany in the case of an all-out war. Western Germany was by all means an extremely important piece of land during this time, and they needed it to be well protected. Germany spent millions of dollars attempting to produce an aircraft that could get into the air quickly with little runway space. Here in this photo, we see the Dornier Doe 31E getting ready for an experimental flight. This strange aircraft will ultimately be recognized right away by its long needle nose design. The first prototype flew in 1967 and continued until 1971. The vertical lift design didn't prove to be effective for the large plane and ultimately it failed. 